you know, I draw, and a lot of times they're just silly things that may never turn into anything. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd like this idea, for example, yeah. is, you know, you always think that, you know, about wood and the tree. Mm -hmm. And you think that you cut down the tree, saw it up in a lumber, and make wood. Mm -hmm. But then what if it was the other way around? Like the, the object is turning back into a tree. Uh -huh. And so I decided to play with this idea of that the, the tree sort of grew the furniture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so this is one way of looking at it, mm -hmm. where this is the chair and I've got two trees. Mm -hmm. I, I drew this tree pretty well. This tree's crummy. Mm -hmm. I need to draw that again. But then I thought, well, about just another way to do it is that there the tree has been cut down, mm -hmm. but the tree, had, as in, instead of growing a limb, it grew a chair. Grew a seed. Uh -huh. And I propped it up with another piece of wood mm -hmm. so I can get this kind of cantilever, although this needs work too. This wouldn't be the right place for this. So all these need work. But then I'm just try another one mm -hmm. where the limbs that come out of this tree have been clipped mm -hmm. at a point that they're, they're all in line so uh -huh. that they would turn into legs. Uh -huh. So again, as the tree grew up, just like a tree for unknown reasons grows a burl, uh -huh. well, for this tree grew up and for unknown reasons, it turned, it grew a chair. When you make a sketch, you say to yourself, is this a good idea mm -hmm. or not? Mm -hmm. And it might take several sketches. Then you think, does this idea have legs? Can, can this be done many different ways and uh, produce a, a body of work that would make a good exhibit, for example? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because that's the next thing you think about, what am I going to do with it? to do with yeah, yeah. And then somewhere along the way, you gotta think, what am I gonna make it out of? Because I don't automatically think wood, although probably 60, 70% of what we do is wood. Yeah. I wouldn't assume that. I would assume that what else would be good? Obviously, this idea is a wood idea. <laughs> but how you get ideas, uh -huh. they come from very strange places mm -hmm. there. Oh, yeah. That, mm. that is Daphne turning into a tree. Uh -huh. now, so this is where this idea comes yeah, from. Yeah, so if Daphne can turn into a tree, a tree why can can't turn. a tree turn into a chair? <laughs> exactly, yeah. But, so this is pretty large. That's maybe what... Well, this would be, I can tell you exactly, these are drawn to scale. Uh, okay. Here's an important tool. Uh-huh. This one is, it's 108 inches long. Ah, oh, it's pretty big. So, yeah. So this would have to come apart at some point uh -huh. to go into an elevator. Uh -huh. When I was about probably 12 or 13 years old, my father subscribed to a, a little magazine called Delta Craft, uh -huh. which Delta Machinery Company right. published. And it would show projects, you know, how, you, how to make things, uh -huh. a table or a chair, or in one case, a duck decoy. And what it showed in this article was that the duck decoy, what they suggested you do, you go to the lumber yard and you get some three quarter inch pine, and they gave you the patterns to laminate the duck. Mm -hmm. Each layer, you could put the pattern down, you glue them all together, take a rasp and knock off those stair steps, yeah. add the head, and you have a duck. Did you do that? I didn't do that. You didn't do it. <laughs> but it stuck in my memory. Uh -huh. And we didn't really have the tools, or I didn't have any clamps or anything. Yeah. I couldn't really do that when I was a kid, even though I, I kind of wanted to. But anyway, I remembered that. And when I was in college, uh, in studying sculpture, mm -hmm. uh, we would, students would of course keep up with the art magazines right. and there was an article in an art magazine around 19, 
58, 59, uh, about a sculptor named Leonard Baskin. Uh -huh. And Leonard Baskin was a, he was a good sculptor, not very well known now, he's been forgotten. Uh, and he would carve, he was a carver, he carved wood. Mm -hmm. But he carved from laminated blanks. So he would go to a mill house. This article told how he did his work. They would glue him up this huge rectangle of probably mahogany. Uh -huh. You know, it's like three foot by three foot by eight yeah, foot block. Yeah, yeah. And he would go to work carving. And I thought, if only Leonard had seen the article about the duck, he could have saved a ton of time and a whole lot of wood because he would be close to form before he started carving. So it then laminated in more or less the same shape. Yeah. I see. So I thought, that's, that's a great way to make things. Uh -huh. This was before I was into furniture. Uh -huh. I began to try to do things that way. And in college, I tried, but pretty unsuccessfully. We didn't have a planer. And uh, you know, I wanted to make bigger things than pine. I didn't like to work with that. and. We didn't have but like three clamps, and you know, I, couldn't, I couldn't do it. Yeah, yeah. So I didn't do that until later when I began to make furniture. I, I was, had, had access to some good tools by that it, point. By the time you got to RIT, is that it? Yeah, and, and I had access to a good planer and a mm -hmm. jointer and plenty of clamps. Yeah. You need a lot of clamps <laughs> to do this. Th this, is, this is like thinking of this as being framed. Mm -hmm. And it's against the wall. Mm -hmm. And so some of this goes back into the wall. And this is like emerging. Mm -hmm. You know, I saw the horse jumping out of the wall. Uh, well, in the, in the book. Yeah. I got the chair jumping out of the wall. You know, like, uh, I see. I see. sit in it like that. Oh, but yeah. then I thought oh, I had a lot of blank space here. And so I started to carve a bird. Uh -huh. But I, take, I had taken away too much material before I thought of carving the bird. Oh, uh, yeah. So the bird's an okay idea, but this is very poorly done. So I have to do this one over again. But then I thought, what about something entirely different? Just some, just something coming out of the wall. So that one is whatever that thing is. I don't know what that is. Will that turn into something, or will it just be like No, that? that's just a thing. <laughs> I don't know what thing. And I don't think this is it either. Uh, I'm not there yet. And this is just... That, that's well, there, there's, a, there's a good reason for that hole. Okay. And the reason is there is no reason. <laughs> so the hole is part of it? It's yeah, going to be in there? Yeah, it's ah, going to have I a square see. hole. Oh, I see. I see. And I love that idea so much. The square hole That's works. a new idea, isn't it? I mean, yeah. you don't... So I'm going to, right here, this... So you take, I take that idea, the square hole, uh -huh. and this is a chair. This is fiberglass. Mm -hmm. And upstairs, there's a finished one of these, but I decided not to make the addition in plastic as I original pla originally planned. I'm gonna change it to a concrete, oh, this concrete. chair uh -huh. and for outdoors, and I need a drain. Ah. Now, I am gonna cut a square hole right through this, and that'll be the drain. Ah, I see. And so you've transferred that idea to the, uh, the wooden one. Yeah, uh -huh. I just like the square hole. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> I think of my work often as anti-design. Uh -huh. Because I'm not concerned about the practical things that go into most design thinking, where uh -huh. you want to have economy, yeah. you want to have it... Uh, furniture is usually thought of as being able to be moved around. Right. Um, and you know so on about costs and materials and weight and all those considerations are not considerations. So you're at all. you're really just interested in what it looks like. I'm just interested in what it looks like, and I've I've got two thousand pound piece of furniture, and it really isn't a problem. <laughs> I'm, I'm in a a very fortunate position uh, where I can demand enough money that those just are not concerns. Was it always that way, or did you, no, you just reach it, what a point that would you get? Well, it was always kind of that way in my mind, but it wasn't that way. In practice. In practical terms. Yeah. You have to do what you have to do. Yeah. Yeah. And you've got to, got to pay the rent. Yeah. And I've almost had help 
from the beginning. Yeah. And they want to be paid. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so you have to do what you can do. And you can be as wild and as crazy as the economy will allow you to be. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm free to do this kind of crazy thinking, like yeah. know, whether I'll ever make those tree things or not, I have no idea. I yeah. may not. Yeah. But it was fun to do that. Yeah. And I'll do more. I've only done the, I've done m more than I showed you, but uh, yeah. just a few, so it still takes a lot of development because even when you just get this far, right. you're still developing. Right, right. And it's not, not really there yet. Yeah. And as soon as I make one, I'm probably going to learn a whole bunch of other things. Mm -hmm. uh, the real thing in, in true size and with the chip marks in true scale. I may feel differently about it. Yeah. You, you just don't know. So.